DaVinci Resolve for noobs. I've had a few people ask me how to do things like create a coin flip or even a spinning logo inside of Resolve. Well, hang on to your hats. We're going into the Fusion page. But first, we're going to start right here on the edit page. Let's go up to our media pool, right click, and let's create a new Fusion composition. I'm going to call this one Spinning Logo. And once I've created that, let's drag that down into the timeline. Now let's select it, right click, and open in Fusion. Now you'll see to begin, I just have a single media out node. We have been here before. And I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible. Whenever I'm creating a composition, I usually start by grabbing a background node and connecting it onto my media out. It just sets the correct space to match my project and gives me a palette to work with. I'm going to pull the alpha back so I have full transparency and I've just got an open 2D space to work with. Now, if I went up to the upper left in the media pool, make sure you have that selected to see it. I actually have some different versions of my logos here. Let me bring one down into the node area. And typically to connect this in, you would merge it over your background. The shortcut is just grab the output and connect it to this other output. And now we have my logo on top of the background. And if I wanted to move it in some way, what I would typically do is select that logo and add a transform node onto it. And with the transform node selected in the upper right inspector, I could do things like change the size or change the aspect, squish it down a bit, change the angle. But these are all two dimensional motions. I can't spin this thing on its X or Y axis. I can't get behind or to the side of my logo. So let's get rid of that transform. Let me take that media one out of the equation right now. And let's start talking about three dimensional space. Now, if any one of you have ever seen the movie The Matrix, you know they created some really crazy three-dimensional effects in there where they had Trinity jumping up in the air and hanging and they had Neo falling back and dodging bullets. But they did that by surrounding the room with lots of cameras that filmed from every angle and switched between them one frame at a time. That was how they were able to bring a 3D space into a 2D format like film. Well, in Fusion, we have to do a similar thing. We have to start by creating a three-dimensional space to work in. And these nodes over here are the ones that are going to get you into a 3D space. Now, I'm going to start with a simple image plane and bring that down into my timeline. So now you can see I have a bit of a 3D space. And this plane is just like a flat card defining a reference point for that 3D space. Now if I take my two-dimensional logo and I attach it to that image plane, now you'll see my logo is existing in that 3D space. But now we need to figure out how to get this 3D space back over into our two-dimensional space. The first thing we need to add is a Merge 3D node. And we're not using cameras or lighting today. I'm just going to keep it simple. From the Merge 3D, we need to add a Render 3D. And that Render 3D can now be connected to your regular Merge node in line between your background and your output. And now this 3D space is inside of my 2D space. Now, it looks very similar to what I did before, right? Well, what we need to do is before we get to this Render 3D node, we actually need to add a very specific Transform node that transforms in the 3D world. So by selecting that Merge 3D and hitting Shift Spacebar to open our Tools menu, let's type in the word Transform and let's find our Transform 3D node and add that in right there. Now when you select that node in the upper right, you'll see a slightly different list of transform controls. What they call translation is similar to the kind of transform tools we're used to. X will move it left and right, Y will move it up and down, but Z moves it more backward and forward, which is really cool if you want to do things like zoom in through your logo. That can be a really cool trick. And down below that, we have rotation. And even though this rotation on the Z axis looks like the rotation we were used to from the other transform node, you'll see it's very different with X and Y. This X rotation is truly on the X axis and is spinning this thing in three dimensions along that X axis. And if I reset it and I spin the Y rotation, that's going to spin it around in circles on the Y axis. And if I wanted to get this to start spinning, what I would do is put my playhead all the way at the beginning of my timeline, go to that Y axis rotation and put a keyframe. Then I could just move my playhead forward in my timeline and I want to spin this around. But how do I know what a full rotation is? This section over here where you can type in, 
These are degrees. And if you've ever watched any snowboarding or skateboarding, a full rotation is 360 degrees. So let's type in 360 to get a full rotation. And that'll drop a new keyframe right where my playhead is, giving us one full rotation from the beginning to that point. But you might be asking, Daniel, how do I get it to keep spinning? Well, anybody who's been watching my channel recently knows that I showed a trick on how to loop your keyframes. So with that Transform 3D node selected, let's go up to our spline menu. Let's make sure we have our Transform 3D node turned on so that we can see the keyframes. If you can't see your keyframes right off the bat, you can hit this little button here. It'll bring them all into view, and then you can shrink down the view a little bit to tighten it up. And these are my two keyframes, the one from the beginning where we started, and then a full rotation to 360 right there, and then it stops. But if we left click hold and draw a box around both keyframes, right click in the gray area and choose set loop and then choose loop, this will keep repeating all of those keyframes over and over so that when we play through, that logo is gonna just keep spinning and spinning and spinning for whatever the length of our clip. And if we want to increase the speed of the spin, all we need to do is select just that upper keyframe, left click and drag it closer because the closer two keyframes are together, the faster the animation is. And now when we play it, you'll see that the logo is spinning faster. So now if we go back to the edit page, let me drag that that up into an upper track and bring something in down below it like some footage of a city. I can stretch this out as long as I need it to be and this will continue to sit there and spin right over our footage underneath it. Remember you can still do all the same things that you would do with any video footage right up in the transform window. Let's say I wanted to start at the beginning and have this zoom in from nothing. Let me left click and pull the zoom factor all the way down, set a keyframe, then I'll move forward a little bit, left click on the zoom X and drag it so that it's a bit bigger. And that automatically sets another keyframe. And when I play back my footage, you'll see my spinning logo getting bigger and zooming right out to center screen. Play with this, learn how to do these steps. And in the future, we'll talk about how to do even more.